North Carolina Cottage Food Law. And can you sell food from home in North Carolina? So in this video of Cottage Foods Laws, YouTube's premier home-based entrepreneur channel, we're gonna cover and get into North Carolina's cottage food business and the laws surrounding them. But you might be a little shocked at what I'm about to tell you based on what North Carolina has in place. And we're gonna get to that right now. All right, so welcome back to Cottage Foods Laws. This is YouTube's premier food entrepreneur channel for the home-based food entrepreneur, that would be you. And if you are just watching this as a first video, definitely hit the subscribe button and bell notification because this channel is brand new and we are gonna upload a ton of useful information for you, the homemade food entrepreneur. Every state we're gonna cover, and we're gonna have all kinds of additional resources on packaging, labeling, where to get equipment, even where to get help and so much more. Now, we're not new to YouTube. You definitely check the links down below. We have a multitude, a whole bunch actually, of YouTube channels dedicated to food entrepreneurship here on YouTube. Definitely check it out and subscribe to those channels. We have one channel that's got over a thousand videos and nearly a hundred thousand subscribers. There's a lot of useful information. So let's dive into North Carolina's cottage food laws. Now, the funny thing is North Carolina doesn't actually have a cottage food law, but although they have a home-based food program, they don't necessarily have cottage food laws, which is kind of odd, kind of weird, but that is how it is. Um, but now the local governments and local entities, make sure you double check with your specific city and county within the state of North Carolina and see what they have as far as what they allow and such, because many of the local ordinances and laws might be slightly different or a variation thereof. OK, so what I'm going to cover in this video is what kind of food you can make, where you can sell it. Um, are there any licenses and inspections and all that good stuff to go on? So that's what I'm going to give you a rundown. And of course, as always, we'll have additional information on our website. In the description section, you'll see a couple of links there as far as North Carolina is concerned. So let's get right into it. Number one, selling. So where can you sell cottage foods? Where can you sell homemade foods in the state of North Carolina? Now, farmer's markets, of course, is one of them. Keep in mind, though, every farmer's market may have its own rules and regulations. You may need to get a license or permit from the specific farmer's market that you're going to attend. Now, that has nothing to do with the cottage food laws or any of that sort or the state of North Carolina. You need to check with them. So every farmer's market is kind of run by the owner of that market. So you may have to either pay a fee or may have to get an additional um, type of permit or license. So be, be aware of that, too. You can sell online, roadside stands, restaurants, retail stores, and even uh, from home. If you are okay with it and comfortable, you can actually have your customers come directly to your home. As far as delivery services and delivering, you can do that as well, but you have to deliver it in person. Normally, that's how most all states work. If you have a delivery setup where somebody wants to order something from your home, maybe you're doing cakes, maybe you're doing special event cupcakes or something of that set effect, you can definitely deliver it but you have to deliver it in person, okay? So keep that in mind. The variations also of selling online, most states um, are starting to, little by little, evolve and allow you to sell your product online with a website, but they're not allowing you to ship it over state lines. Now, that runs into a bit of a problem because I'm an e-commerce business guy myself, and I know that we get orders from other states. And delivering them and shipping them over state lines, we're actually in a commercial kitchen, which is licensed totally differently. But having an online presence, you're going to get people from other states buying your product. That's going to be a little bit of a problem because you technically can't ship it over state lines. So next up, what can you sell? So what kind of food, Damien, can I sell under North Carolina's cottage food laws? Well, you can do things like cookies, cupcakes, uh, donuts, muffins, scones. Uh, wedding cakes, uh, sweet breads, different types of breads, but you can't fill those breads with like um, some type of hamburger or meat or protein or what's known as potentially hazardous ingredients, uh, things like cheeses. These are items that are actually time or temperature sensitive and they have to be kept and maintained at a certain temperature or eaten within a certain time frame. So keep that in mind when you're doing breads or if you're stuffing things with different types of cheeses and things. Um, that's normally not allowed. You can do brownies, biscuits, cake pops, bagels, cookies, as I mentioned, tortillas and such. Um, as far as candy is concerned, there's a lot. You can do fudge. You can do cotton candies. You can do chocolates, brittles, uh, buttercream frostings, of course. Uh, but remember that you can't use anything that would need to be refrigerated. Uh, lollipops, honey, ketchup, oils, nut butters, mustards, pickles, salsas. You can also do vinegars and syrups. Some of the dry items that they allow you to do as well would be uh, tea blends, spices blends, herbs. 
dried vegetables, coffee, cereals, pastas, and dried fruits. That's a huge, huge business, by the way. Between the spices alone, being able to do that, or tea at home, those are huge, big sellers uh, when it comes to cottage food businesses. Um, now, also pastries. So things like empanadas, you can do danishes, pies. But the thing with the empanadas, again, back to what we are talking about before, you can't stuff them with any type of a protein or meat product because that is going to be an item that has to be time or temperature sensitive. So that kind of narrows what you can do with that. But you can come up with some really cool ideas. Also, fruit butters, uh, preserves, apple sauces, jams and jellies. North Carolina has a very vast array of items. There is a bit of a process, though, to get set up. It's a bit of a uh, time consuming thing, but once you are set up and you've got all the legal things out, out to the side, you're done. You can do a lot. Like for instance, some of the snacks you can do, kettle corn, popcorn, vegetable chips, nuts and seeds, granola, uh, chocolate covered items, caramel corns and candied apples. Um, some of the uh, items that are prohibited would be uh, low acid foods and also perishable baked goods. So again, you're making a product that's perishable potentially, like let's say a cheese danish. If you're doing cheese danishes, that's something that can perish uh, if it's not kept at a certain temperature. Or There's this one dude I follow on Twitter and they have the same style. So cool this is pretty know. vast. But, um, and from each one of those that I just mentioned, he was kind of variation. Like so for instance, if you do trail mix, you can have 100 varieties of trail mix. And then he... That's not a problem. But just keep in mind that you have to definitely stay within what they allow you to make. So... How much money can I sell in North Carolina, Damien, under cottage food laws? There is no sales limit. So you could sell a million dollars worth of products out of your house. Good for you, uh, which is pretty amazing. A lot of states limit it. Uh, North Carolina has no sales limit on specifically their cottage food uh, businesses. Next up, some of the things you can't do. Now, you can't, of course, have pets in the area. If you Pets are prohibited in the production area of your kitchen or wherever it be that you're making your cottage foods. Keep them out of that because you want to maintain some type of sanitary conditioning. You want to just use common sense. You definitely don't want pet hair and stuff like that all over the place when people are producing a food product to be eaten. So keep that in mind as well. Now, let's get into the business aspect of it. Now, application and home inspections. So even though the Department of Agriculture actually doesn't give out permits for these types of home processing businesses, they do actually require you to fill out what's known as an application and have an inspection, which is kind of weird in my, my opinion. It doesn't make any sense. But again, if you don't, you, you, you would fill out an application, you get an inspection, you would think that they would issue, but I guess they don't necessarily need to issue a permit. So here's some of the things that they look for, a list of other locations where the goods will be sold, and a plan for transporting the products, a production flow that specifies how foods will be processed, a plan for how food and equipment will be stored, and basically your ingredients that you're going to be putting and where you get those ingredients from. Now, keep in mind, if you want to make acidified foods, you will have to take a... If the processor basically wants to make acid, acid foods like pickles, preserves, and dressings, and sauces, you have to take a course on safe production of those types of products. Now, that's between about $300 to $450 for those specific classes. Next up, you have to also get well testing. So... Many of the cottage states, uh, every every law pretty much is the same about this. If you have a well on your property and you're getting your water from a well, your water will have to be tested to ensure that it's clear and free of bacteria and it's sanitized and sanitary for you to use. Because remember, you're going to be using water to clean the different um, utensils, pots and pans, all your cookware to make your products at home. So they want to make sure that that water is clear and not uh, free of bacteria. So the label requirements. So Damien, how do you label the cottage foods as far as what do I have to put on it? What's required? Good question. Number one, the business address. Now, the business address is actually going to be your home address. You cannot use a PO box. You cannot create an LLC in your neighbor's house or a commercial kitchen. You have to use your home address. The name of your business. So if it happens to be Damien's uh, Chocolate Covered Cookie Factory, then that needs to be the name on there. Make sure you put the business name. Next up on your label, you need to have ingredients, okay? So the ingredient list is very unique. You need to make sure that you add it from most to least. So whatever the most uh, in used ingredient, you need to make sure that you've got that on there down to the least. Next up is the net amount. So the net amount works like this. Whatever the weight of the product is, if it's 16 ounces of, let's say, trail mix, you need to weigh that and you need to make sure that's on the label. That's not including the packaging. So if you put it in a bag, don't weigh the bag in the label. It needs to be done separately. If you have a canister or some type of container that has any weight to it, that's not net weight. Make sure that it's only the product and the amount that's going to be on there. Of course, it doesn't have to be 16 ounces. Whatever size you come up with, you need to make sure that's on the label. Next up is the product name. 
So if it happens to be Damien's Amazing Trail Mix, then that needs to be on the label too. You need to put Damien's Amazing Trail Mix. Of course, whatever it is that you're making might be slightly different, but keep that in mind as well. So that's pretty much the gist of what you can do and how to get up and running it in North Carolina. If you're looking for more information, check out down below in the description section. As I mentioned, I'll have some links directly to um, some information from North Carolina, actually, specifically, and that'll help you out even more. Um, and if you have any questions about it, let us know, and I'll see you guys on our next